Okay, so here we go. Um, I've got a browser on the left with um, Linux from scratch 5.0. Let me get rid of these ones. Look like they're old. Yeah, these are the previous versions. Um, Linux from scratch 5 here. And a terminal on the right, which is currently connected to the Pentium 233. Um, I just connected and found that the date was wrong for some reason. I, I know I've got some hardware issues with this machine. Um, either it's related to that or the battery's on the way out, so I'm not sure. So I've just had to um, go in and set the clock, so it is correct now. Um, one thing... I realized I was doing wrong with, with the host name. I was putting like 4.0 in uh, as part of the host name and realized the reason why that's not working is because it's forming that dot makes the zero become part of the um, fully qualified domain name of, of the machine and that's why it's not being used. So um, it would become, that dot zero would become one tier of the different tiers within the full full name of the machine so I'll have to put a dash in when I rename or name uh, Linux from scratch 5.0 that's I just thought it was the an early version of software that couldn't cope with the full stop but it's it's obvious that I'm it's me doing something silly really um, so I have to remember not to use a full stop in the host name when we come to that um, so what I need to do, I guess, is to start going through the book. So I'll start the preface and I'll just go through. Um, I'll be dipping in and out of the book initially because, the, as usual with the LFS, there's no specific instructions for setting up the partition or um, you know where, where, where you want to put it or what you might want to format it as. Um, so I'll just get through that part until we get to the more standard um, instructions. So you can see this manual starting to look a bit like how the modern one does. The layout's starting to look quite a lot familiar. In fact, I did notice the other day, there's a grammatical error that's been in there for years and years. And I, th I think it's still in the latest version. Um, so maybe if somebody from the Linux from Scratch team is watching this, maybe they could fix it if I uh, remember to spot it. Um, so there's the usual stuff about how the book's laid out and what the typos, the typefaces do and change log there. So you can see that this is 5th of November 2003, um, this version of Linux from scratch. So there's all the changes made there, uh, resources for help and so on, all the people who've been involved in the project. And then we get onto the nitty gritty about exporting LFS. So let's start that straight away. So preparing a new partition. Okay, so we've created a partition. So as you can see, we've got some loose instructions on, on formatting the partition. So let's just check we can see our partition. There it is there, that HDA8. So let's copy this. In fact, I'm going to create it because we can as a EXT3 partition. So that, oh, sorry, we've got to put in a minus J to tell it we want to use the journaled file system. And it's dev HDA8 is the partition. So really I should copy and paste that to make sure that I'm typing things in correctly because I don't want to be formatting the wrong partition. So let's run that. And there you can see it says creating the journal. So we know we've got an EXT3 partition. <coughs> we don't need to create a swap drive because we've already got one. And we can move on. And we've already done this export. We can do echo LFS to check it. And there it is. Um, one thing I'm going to do is to 
edit the bash profile and add in a few things here. I've already changed the PS1, the prompt, the default prompt, so that we can see the name, the host, and the path that we're in, which is quite useful. I'm also going to add in <coughs> two other things. First thing is to add an export for this LFS. In fact, I'll just copy and paste this. Uh, that's just so that if I reboot the machine, um, that the LFS variable will be there by default when I'm logged into the root. Um, it's quite likely this is going to take more than a day's worth of compiling to get this complete. <clears throat> and although you haven't seen the message because I'm on a remote terminal that does support um, multicolors, um, if I was at the terminal and I did VI at the moment, it would complain about the current term value um, not being able to deal with it. Basically, I can't remember the exact message. Um, it can't deal with the fact that there's 256 colors um, that the current terminal is capable of. And the issue is a, an error about that. So if that's an issue to you, you can add in export term equals just make it x term dash color without the 256 and that will fix that error and it does seem to affect the way um, Vi behaves because I think it defaults back to an ANSI terminal um, that obviously limits what you can do in the terminal so I'll set that as well in case I have to do anything at the terminal in, in Vi for example but apart from that as you can see when I've used via there's been no messages it's not warn me of that and that's because I'm accessing remotely and this terminal is capable of dealing with 256 colors so now let's carry on in fact if I log out just check that those do become permanent log back in again and echo LFS yep that's set and We'll look at the term as well. And you can see that's set to X term color as well. And for anybody in the UK who uses British English, uh, notice the color is uh, American spelling. So let's now create a mount point to put our partition on, which will hold Linux from scratch 5. So it's HDA8. And we can see that we've got approximately 1.7 gigabytes available after the formatting. That's what's been left for us. Uh, we're not going to create any other um, mount points. We will be mounting boots because that is a separate partition. I'll be reusing that. Um, but we can deal with that when we come to it, uh, come to that point. So let's now create a place to put all the sources and change the ownership of that as usual. So here's all the packages. So what I need to do really while we're doing the manual is to get that downloading because it might take a minute or two. So CD LFS sources should be empty. It is. So I'm now going to go to um, fetch the sources. Um, I believe these are available on the internet. Um, if they're not, I'll make them available as I have done with the LFS4. Um, in fact, they might not be. I think this, oh, I've got all the packages because I kept a copy of them. Um, in which case, I will make them available. Um, Oh, that's the book. Yeah, that's the trouble. Uh, looks like maybe somebody's put them on. Oh, yeah, looks like somebody's put an ISO and a zip file of them. That's quite handy. Um, so I don't know who's done that. It certainly wasn't me. Um, but yes, I'd imagine you could use that. 
Um, and if you doubt the sources, I assume there's uh, MD5s. Is there? I can't remember now. Um, well, let me get this going. I'm chatting about that. Uh, so I need to go to Pro 200. Zero. So I'll download the MD5. And the archive itself. So yeah, while that's downloading, let's check. Uh, let's see what's in that review contents, yeah. Yeah, it looks like the patches are in there as well. So it looks like it is complete. So that's nice of whoever's done that. Unuploaded by unknown, okay. Um, yeah, that's the manual again. Oh, that's the latest version anyway. Um, so yeah, it looks like they are available. Um, so I'm not sure whether there's any MD5s to check it against. In fact, I don't think even I've got any in my one because I, yeah, let's just skip forward to, no, there isn't anything there. Okay. I guess if it's just for interest, it's probably not a, a problem or you could hunt down some of the archives maybe and just validate them against separate downloads. Uh, as I imagine, a lot of these will still be available if you hunt for them. Failing that, if it is an issue, I can, as I say, upload these ones I've got. And the, the, the ones I've got are from when I, I did build Linux and Scratch 5 way back when. Which is why I've still got them. So this is nearly done. Okay, so let's save that to disk. Oh, right, I'll press on this. Wonder why nothing was happening there, I was on the wrong window. Okay, so we can quit that now. Uh, or can we? Let me just check. Book. Yep, I can quit. Okay, and I'll extract that as well. I've got to tell it what archive I'm using. X, uh, that's the wrong one. It's J for BZ2. So yeah, not only is the machine slow, obviously the disks are slow. Um, the next machine will be using SATA, so it will be a little bit faster in that respect as well. Okay, this doesn't look like it's doing anything. I guess it is. Oh, 
Well, it does seem very, yeah, very slow for some reason. Maybe it's because it's a BZ, BZ2 archive. It's uh, compressed a little bit better, and therefore it's a little bit slower uncompressing than it would be if it was a GZIP. Uh, it's also probably because I've been spot. I've just been finishing the LFS 6.31 from version 5. So I've been used to the Pentium 4. I've got to readjust my brain as to how slow this machine is now. Okay, so that's finished. Um, it looks like it's extracted to a directory, yeah, so I need to move everything that's in there into this directory and then get rid of that. Um, I'll keep the back packages tarball in case I um, accidentally delete one of the um, tarballs which I have been known to do sometimes. So there's all the packages and patches. Let's now create the tools directory and symlink onto the root which is already there so it shows that I've already tested this. Let's remove that. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, it's the symlink that's there. I'll uh, I'll remove it anyway, and then we can recreate the symlink to make sure it points correctly, as we'd expect. So now we're going to create the LFS user. <clears throat> okay, as it says, it already exists. So I've uh, obviously not deleted it. Let's do that. doing let's check the home yeah that's there as well so I'll get rid of that we can start all over again okay so let's do this again that's better 
give it a password, change ownership to of tools to LFS. Why didn't that copy? Oh, we still. <clears throat> let's try that again. Okay, it will ask me one one extra time. So change the ownership, change the ownership of sources to LFS and become LFS. Then we create a bash profile file. And that source that. Now what I'm gonna do is to again change the prompt because it's not actually showing us what directory we're in. So if I change to the sources directory again, it's not very helpful showing us where we are. So as we did with the root, if I cat it actually, be easier than me typing it in. Uh, bash, oh, there we are. Uh, and a fest there at the moment. So let's do dot bash. Uh, profile and I'll copy this PS1 prompt in for the Linux from scratch user and I'll just that uh, add that at the end there and I'll change the hash to a dollar because we're not the super user and resource that so that makes a, a bit better to read now. <clears throat> 